Hi everybody. How are you doing today? I was thinking a lot. I don't know why I'm not feeling this, but I was thinking, I woke up thinking about referred pain. Do you know that phenomenon? There was a time um, in my life where I had, oh, different aches and pains and I sought attention, medical attention, and um, chiropractors seem to have, have the best understanding of referred pain. Uh, I was having a problem with my arm, with an arm, and uh, they said, well, the problem isn't really in your arm, that's the referred pain. And I'm like, oh, where is the problem then? Well, it's in your back, it's in your shoulder blade. Another time it was uh, a leg pain, they said, Oh no, it, it comes down here into your, uh, it's really from your hip and your lower back. And I didn't believe them until they fixed it. And then I said, wow, what do you know? Referred pain is when you think that pain is coming from someplace in your body. Um, it registers in your brain, in our brains, that it's coming from that part of the body, but it truly is not. Really, the pain is coming the etiology of the pain is someplace else. So, um, as I was lying in bed thinking about that this morning and going, huh, I wonder what else, what other phenomena that could be related to or a corollary with. I thought about joy. We have referred pain. Do we have referred joy? Do we have times when we think that joy is caused by something, but it's really something else? Then that led me to think about uh, politics, as I think about politics a lot lately. Uh, do we associate something with one thing when it's really something else that might be behind it or um, undergirding it and we're not aware of it? Or maybe we are aware of it, but we just don't see it. Then I thought, well, do we feel that way about God? So here's kind of where I'm at with this. I'd be interested in your input. I don't really know that this is a big deal to think about, except that maybe, um, is the pain any less real because it's referred? Not for me. It's still painful. It doesn't matter where it's coming from, except if I want to treat it and I want to stop it. Likewise, with joy, it doesn't really matter why I'm joyful or where it's coming from, as long as, as long as I can enjoy it. <laughs> you know, I maybe I need to know where it comes from to enhance it uh, and get more of it. As far as politics, um, I don't really care to know why somebody is doing something as much as I want to know what it is they're doing. I mean, the why is interesting and it can be predictive uh, where I think what else I think they might do or how uh, it might give me a reason to align with them more or less, but it doesn't really, I mean, I want to know how, I want to know how legislators vote on things. I want to know. Uh, you know, actions speak louder than words for me. So uh, there could be a totally despicable human being, <laughs> but if they are voting the way I want them to vote, um, that matters to me. Whereas you could have a really great person who's super smart and speaks well and holds a lot of the the those kinds of outward uh, appearance values that I that I do that I use to you know, initially um, say, oh yeah, I think we have something in common, but boy, if they're voting opposite to me and my values, um, it's a totally, that's a total deal breaker. Um, then I'm thinking about, well, where does God fit into this? Ultimately, everything from God comes from God. Everything, period, comes from God, right? So, if I'm looking um, and finding God, let's say, in nature, does that mean that God is nature? Am I a pantheist? Or am I looking at a manifestation of 
divinity that happens to be through nature. Does it matter? Do I still worship the same God? Are the nature gods the same as the one God? Just factions or fractions or facets of that one God. Hmm. Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad and the Hindu deities and Native American totems, uh, are they all bespeaking the same thing? I don't even want to call it a thing. The same entity, energy, consciousness, river. <laughs> You know, see what I'm getting at? And does it matter? So, um, my friend and I years ago decided that, and I think I've shared this uh, in an earlier prayerful pause, decided that religions' approaches to God were like uh, those Fisher Price balls that you see, you know, that has a, you put a cylinder in one side and and a cube in another side, and a, uh, what are we, a, a pyramid in another side, and uh, you have to match up the shapes with the thing, and you put them all inside. Then you can open up the ball, shake them out, and do it all over again. And um, my friend and I were talking about this, oh, this probably, gosh, 10 or 15 years ago now, but um, that uh, I refer to that as my God ball. I think that... Uh, it's like we are in we live inside that and all of the space outside of that ball the god ball is god outside and inside but we want to find a way to connect to god and so some of us uh, go through the cylinder hole and some of us go through the trapezoidal hole and some of us go through the cube and uh, we we find the way that matches up with us but the entity outside um, is constant I tend to think of world religions that way, different manifestations and different paths to take to get to them. So is that like referred pleasure or pain? And and I'm not really focusing on the source as much as I am mm, the pathway or the manifestation. And is that a bad thing? I mean, you have to answer for yourself. I don't think it's a bad thing myself. Uh, I, I choose to uh, get, I don't want to say get to God because God's already here, but I, I choose to grow in my spirituality through the teachings of Jesus. Uh, they're love-based, they're inclusive, they're radical, they're empowering, uh, it's communal. And those are all things that, that speak to me. Uh, they're hope-filled. Um, peace filled uh, advocacy fits into that um, but is it wrong for someone else to find the way that speaks to them and, and, and it's not Jesus well, no it's not wrong at all in my opinion so when we think about what hurts or what feels good I think we have to recognize it hurts or it feels good and deal with those things accordingly and respond to those things accordingly. But we also should be thinking about the source. Where is it really coming from? So as we look at world events and national events and communal events, community events that are happening right now, maybe even things going on in our families, we can see the, uh, the manifestation of it. But what's behind it? Deal with the manifestation honor what's behind it without going into too much detail because I don't want to uh, step on her privacy my daughter and I had a disagreement in the last couple of days uh, we've learned how to disagree with each other over the years which I'm grateful for it used to as you would expect with teenagers get in the way of our relationship it doesn't any longer really yeah. but do I look at uh, what's going on that's causing the upset? Yes. 
uh, we need to deal with that. But what is it that's really behind that? And can we get to the point where we can talk about that? Same is true for uh, faith, our relationships, our government, our culture. We can talk about police brutality, what's really behind it, racism. Um, so it's we can't do one or the other, really. And I think that's what we've been trying to do for way too long. In humanity, not just in this country, I think it's human nature. Uh, take the simplest way out, I'm just going to deal with what is. Well, the other is as well, you know. So we have to kind of bifurcate our attention. And they're not going to be 50-50. You have to deal with the behavior or the pain initially, but at the same time you have to reserve a little of your attention for what's behind it. And that's my thought for today. Let's look. start looking today and over the weekend, because I'll, I'll be away from you for a few days and return on Monday. But what? let's start looking at what's behind some of these things that we're feeling, positive and negative, good and bad, um, pleasurable and not. We'll deal with what is, but let's also look at what's behind it and see if we can well, achieve a better understanding, maybe address some of the issues, uh, maybe connect with people in a different way. And that's the prayerful pause in our day for today, a few minutes to think of something outside ourselves. I'm Pastor Deb Swift. Thank you for joining me for this time. I'm here in Rochester, New York, pastoring South Presbyterian Church. If you'd like to learn more about us, any of our acts of faith, our other ministries, check us out. Uh, the website is on the end slide of this video. And otherwise, please be safe. God bless, take care, and bye for now.